So stay tuned, we'll get into some tackle tips right now. <laughs> Welcome back everybody. Uh, obviously, this is a different day than I normally would upload. I was doing Sundays and Wednesdays. Um, if you guys really want me to do that same upload schedule, uh, obviously more often than not, that could be a default schedule to go to for you guys. Uh, 5 a.m. usually on Wednesdays, so, so you guys can get your day started right with a good fishing show. And obviously 7 o'clock in the morning on Sunday, so you guys can sleep in long enough to recover from Saturday. <laughs> whether you guys were fishing all day or all night or doing or whatever. But uh, today is going to be a Tackle Tip Tuesday. Uh, that's what I'm going to start doing. I have a lot of tackle to go over, and it just you know it gave me one of those... Uh, you get like a big, it's like a brain fart slash, you know, you get an epiphany, a, a genius idea, and you're like, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do Tackle Tip Tuesdays. And uh, I want to help you guys understand more so how and what to do with the baits that you see me using. And it's mainly because I am really, really bad, I'm sorry, that I'm bad at <laughs> talking about it while I'm fishing. I do talk about it. I try to explain what I'm doing in the moment, but it's one of those things. I'm so used to fishing and focusing on what I'm doing, and that's why I love fishing, is I'm squirrel, ADD, whatever you want to call it, I'm all over the place. So so stay tuned. We'll get into some tackle tips right now. All right, guys. Uh, I'm going to fix this real quick. What I'm going to do here, let me fix this real quick. So you guys can actually see what I'm doing. Um, I'm going to go over something that I've been using a lot of. And uh, I just thought about it. I'll probably link, if I can find links for it uh, for you guys, I will link them below in the description. Uh, otherwise, all my other equipment's always linked below. So if you guys see this, everything's linked below uh, to get it yourselves. But what I'm going to go over... Let me find one real quick. I believe it would be right here. What I'm going to go over is this little guy right here. And I'm going to explain why it works so dang well in the spring. Uh, it works all year, but, I mean, realistically, a lot of people think you have to use live bait in the spring. And the, the big thing is, is yeah, live bait's going to be king... Pretty much no matter what time of year it is and if the if the fish aren't biting and it's you know super hard like conditions or whatever go to live bait it, it'll you'll catch fish but i'm going to explain how to use this little tool to catch yourself a lot more fish okay as you guys can see i have there's one there one there and a couple sitting in there uh Actually, let me get the little bag so you guys actually know what they're called. Okay, like I said, I'm going to list everything below. Uh, I think I have these on a couple of my other ones. But if you guys can't get these, uh, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm wearing the shirt. So Lakeside Bait and Tackle. Let's see if you guys can actually see it. Uh, that's a local bait shop that I go to. Uh, he's always got all the gear, and he's always got these on hand. Uh, Kalen's makes them. Uh, he's one of the one of the guys that I think has the most Kalen stuff in his shop right now. But uh, these things are called uh, the crappie scrub. And I've talked about this in another video if you've already seen this. But these, I'm, I want to go into detail and how to use these. I'll throw in some clips right here on basically how how to go by doing it. I'll, I'll, I'll kind of voice over and kind of talk you through what I'm doing. And then we'll come back. Okay, so obviously if you guys have seen this video before, you kind of you might have an idea of you know what I'm doing here. But to simply put it, if you look at the docks in front of me, I'm going to kind of uh, segment them out. You know, the first one out furthest from the shore, uh, I'm going to work the outside of that real carefully, casting and retrieving, casting and retrieving. Uh, I'll get into a little bit more detail on how you should be retrieving these in a minute. But the big thing is, is like you see, I started with the outside one. 
I worked my way to the inside, the next one in. And the thing is, is if you watch my reel, so be careful as to just watching like for action. Look at how I'm reeling this in. You'll see I kind of vary my retrieve. Uh, there I just popped it a little bit uh, right before I brought it in. And then now I'm going to cast back into the pocket. The thing is, is so if you look at this, it's, a, it's in the shape of a U. And what I did is I cast to the furthest back pocket because my trolling motor is already right up by the, uh, the pier where I was casting previously. And if there's any fish right there, the, the likelihood is they're scared away by the trolling motor. And uh, th like I said, the, the trick here is working your way in. So now I just cast to the, the shadow side of the pocket uh, further out uh, because I'm in, in a better line of sight to casting to it. The big thing here is pick apart an area like as much as you think you can. Uh, the biggest stuff that I really focus on is if I'm coming into a, like a little area, so like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there's like 12 poles in the, in the water right here. Uh, if you can see the supports for the pier, otherwise it looks like most of the pier is a floating pier, but the supports go down to the bottom. Now those supports could hold fish. That's the structure that you would be looking at. So that's something you got to pay attention to. And right there, I just had a bite about uh, from this this cast. It looks like I was about 20, 20 feet away, 25 feet away from the boat. And I had a bite and I, I kind of jumped the gun. I might have set the hook a little bit too hard. Obviously, I missed that one. So now I'm going to work it in sporadically, hoping that those fish are still looking for what they were just biting. And that's the biggest thing is like work slow, especially if you had a bite. Now, something that you're, you know, a lot of people will do this is, you know, you get the bite over there where I'm casting again, and they will take their boat, or you'll be on the pier and you'll walk right to that spot, trying to get as close as you can to where you had your bite. Now, that's a problem because you're going to scare away fish in shallow water. I promise you will scare them away and you won't get any bites and you'll think you just had a snag or something. So instead, I cast out and you see I paused for a second there because I thought I had a bite. So I waited for him to pull on it and that is the biggest thing here. Uh, that's obviously a nice, you know, nice eater crappie <laughs> and I whack the camera with it but big thing here take your time okay so this is a short little clip here and the reason I'm using it is to kind of define how to actually fish this bait you'll see I'm kind of just lightly dragging it in I'm not really imparting a bunch of action here uh, I'm staying on the outside, like I said before, to stay away from just running into an area because you will just scare the fish away and you won't think anything's there. Always fish before you travel. That's the biggest tip I can give you guys. Um, as you see, I'm just, like you can see it, I'm giving a little pops here and there, but it's just a really slow drag crawl. And the thing is, is when the water is cold, you have to move really slow, just like the fish are moving. If you try to go too fast, like if you're midsummer and the water was warm, 60, 70 degrees or something like that, you will be able to just kind of crank baits in. And I, I'll do other tackle tip videos where I have video uh, baits like that. But you see, you can kind of watch my line. It's just a steady retrieve. I have the rod at an angle that I can detect bites at. And right there, that fish hit three feet from the boat. So the key here is do not vary your retrieve too much in the springtime. Okay, so this last clip here is just basically kind of to help you guys understand how much of a difference it can be uh, cruising into a spot or kind of working an outside area up to an area or a spot uh, you can see I'm much further away from the piers here and that's because I had a bite uh, casting the opposite direction I believe if I can recall properly and 
the thing was is when I cast it out, I caught a, or you know got a bite. So that was me kind of surveying the area. And for all of you new to crappie fishing, they are nomadic little creatures, and they will swim all over the place unless they are locked down in like a piece of structure or something like that. So make sure you do cast all around you at any given time, and that should help you guys figure out some uh, like locations where they tend to congregate more so than others. And if they are structure based, you will find out very quickly if you're fishing structure where they are. Okay, so you guys just saw me using this reel, which like I said, everything's linked in the description. This is my uh, Abu Garcia Revo S10. It's a 1000 series. It's got four pound P line on it. And then it's got a, I believe this is a 132nd or 164th ounce jig. It's very small with that crappie scrub on there. Uh, tied direct and nothing really special after that other than, you know, it's on one of my regular ugly stick rods that I believe is a, let me see if you can actually see this. I turn it. So that's what you're looking for right there. And I don't know why I like it personally, but this one just works for me. Uh, that is the... I believe, yeah, that's the Ugly Stick Light Pro Series. Okay, so like I was saying before in that video on basically how to throw it, what weights to use, stuff like that. You'll, for, for instance, you can see I have like two different jig heads on here, the same color basically. Well, there's a chartreuse that's yellow, uh, but you know about the same, same hook length, you know, distance from the, the actual thing over. But the, the key is to get them to fit properly, and it's all about that fall rate, like I was saying. So I hope that helps you guys out. I mean, the big thing was is I wanted to keep these real short. Uh, like I said, this is going to be a Tackle Tip Tuesday thing. And the big thing is the ability to convey why I'm using the bait, when I'm using the bait, and how you guys can take it yourself and kind of learn how to use it. Uh, I hope I... Gave you guys enough information uh, describing what was going on in those videos and how the fish were biting and why they were biting when they were. Uh, that, that'll that actually kind of narrow down a lot of the problems that a lot of people have uh, trying new things for crappie fishing. So I hope that helps, like I said. And obviously, if you're not new here, you know what's up. But if you're new here, please just remember to 